another week, boys, and another twab. This week, at Bungie, Crota is back in all of his rotating, rotating glory. We're starting to watch you take him on, but we'll get to that in a minute. Did you complete this week's story mission? How did your screenshots come out? Have you traversed your way through altars of summoning and shown those enemies who's the strongest of them all? You, duh. Deep breaths. We know that this was a barrage of questions, but it's been so much fun running alongside you all, especially seeing everyone zoom around with Strand. So keep it up and keep those commendations coming. Last week, we talked about Destiny 2 Showcase, Guardians from Maui, calling all creators, Building nostalgia with older seasons. Featured requests, what are they? Three new season 22 strand aspects. Yes, they are very potent. World's first rundown, new emblem, who dis? This week, Crotus in Raid and Bungie Rewards. Iron Banner Dates, which should be next week. Turtle Power, Cabbage Patch. But what about Stasis? Prime Gaming Update, Player Support Report, Art of the Week, Movie of the Week picks. All right. By the way, we're supposed to be getting some things disabled. We'll see. It's crotating time. We are less than 24 hours away from the Crotus in Reprise Raid. I want to give you some reminders before hopping into the raid tomorrow. You will need to be at 1790 power to be at the cap for all encounters to take the raid on. To give our server some room to breathe, there will be no bounty or weapon crafting progress for combined kills below boss tier within King's Fall and Crotus Inn while contest mode is enabled. So, the first 48 hours. Wow. All right. Now, we are going to change things up a bit too. When the first team completes the raid and subsequent challenges, We'll verify that and proclaim them the world's first winners via the Destiny the Game account. However, we'll still be performing a thorough security validation. And if we find any activity that breaks our world first rules, we will disqualify that team and award the next team the belts. We just want to handle this on our end and not make you wait around for a winner to be declared. So even if you see an announcement, then it's strong in case there are any shenanigans because you could still have a chance at the title. Good luck, Guardians. Yeah, I actually wonder what's... You know, we'll see. We'll see. I know that there's been some sketchy stuff here and there. Not necessarily with rule first teams, but I've heard of people like after the raid where like one contestant will end up getting banned. I don't know if that's actually resulted in the whole whole squad getting banned or anything like that. But I know for this one in particular, everything has been data mined. Oh, Necrocast. Yes, it's coming back. To celebrate this return of a fan favorite weapon, we have a guaranteed reward for those who are brave enough to take on Crotus in during contest mode. Players that acquire the bottomless pit quest from the raid vendor during the 48-hour contest mode period in Crow's End will have the quest automatically marked as complete and all rewards placed in their inventory immediately. The quest does not require any currencies to purchase it. Rewards will include the Husk of the Pit, the Eidolon Ally, Fully Masterwork, and Necrocast. So essentially the exact same setup from D1. Players will notice they can acquire Essence of the Oversoul from completing raid encounters and triumphs. This is required to complete the bottomless pick quest if they don't finish within the contest mode, as well as to complete the weapon's catalyst objective for Necrochasm. Now, during contest mode period, players who obtain the weapon catalyst will not be able to progress the objective on it, and it will statically show the objective progress at 20 out of 35 essence of Oversos collected, regardless if they collected additional essences. So during that 48 period, guys, you will not be able to progress it past that point, and I guess that's due to the disabling of weapon leveling and whatnot. But that's only for that 48 hour period. We will have to jump on probably a re uh, another review of Necrochasm on Sunday. After contest mode ends, all essence of Oversoul that the player has acquired thus far will still be respected and the player may begin making progress on the catalyst objective, continuing from the number they previously acquired. Players that acquire the bottomless big quest after the 48 hour contest mode will have to complete the quest starting from the beginning to obtain the quest rewards so in some ways guys everyone is going to be rewarded just for jumping in during contest mode of this rate how do you like that instead of it just being locked to you know the the you know i know before it was like the first team to beat it that whole team got the exotic lfg is going to be insane on day one actually actually i think everyone's going to be wanting to do it now if you're going to be able to get necro participation reward uh well yeah i guess you can look it at that I, you know necrochasm i'm more curious to see like what what the weapon is going to come back to us as how good it's going to be how much the catalyst is going to change it so it's not like it's val the type. it's not an annual expansion raid right so i think this is all right i'm okay with it now bungee rewards we can't forget about the loot right we've got quite the set of bungee rewards and personally i cannot wait to get my hands on that ring get it hands ring the following bungee rewards are only available to players who complete the requirements within destiny 2 by the deadlines listed below so Crotus in Raid Ring. Complete the Crotus in Raid by 9.59 a.m. Pacific on September the 12th, 2023. Look at that. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. 
code is in raid pin as well for the for the date though of 9 59 a.m pacific i'm november 28th 2023 and the code is in metal poster by display complete the code is in raid by 9 59 november 28th 2023 by the way we actually have a thing with display there um and then the sword bearer title pin Earn the sword bearer title by 9 59 of february 26 2024 that is a good stretch and of course a raid isn't a raid without a raid belt right here's the silvery new raid belt for the destiny 2 version of crota's end now twitch rivals we're partnering with twitch rivals for the main event kicking off at 9 30 a.m pacific on september the 1st tune in on twitch for live coverage of our crota's end world's first race featuring returning fan favorite commenters professor broman wreck and adam savage will be covering the action while participating teams from around the globe compete for the belts from 10 a.m pacific on september 1st to 10 a.m pacific on september 3rd you will be able to earn the new every end emblem via twitch drops by tuning in for two hours on the twitch rivals channel or one of the approved participating streamers lists i think someone said we're not on this list but i've already talked to i've already talked to my we're not on the list that's weird when I go to it, it says I'm on the list. We'll fix this by tomorrow. My partner manager said we are, in fact, in the Twitch Rival Tournament. So, should be good. I'll verify for sure tomorrow and um, make sure that we're on there, guys. But, yes, you'll be able to get this emblem by just tuning into the stream. Now, Iron Banner. Iron Banner returns next week in all of its week-long week, week -long PvP glory. This go around, on top of having a new emblem and shader available, we have a couple weapons from the two foundries we made official this season, Castoid and Nadir, featuring their own foundry origin traits. First up is Point of the Stack from Castoid, finally returning with Random Rolls. One of the best bows in the game, by the way. It retains the ability to get perks from its original fixed roll, too. Nice. Then we've got the Guiding Sights, which is now Strand. Many of the Nadir, Nadir weapons originally released in, in a time when there was only kinetic damage in the top slot. So expect to see a lot of these weapons come back as either Strand or Stasis in the in the future. Now, the Guiding Sight, I'm going to be honest with you guys, wasn't my favorite. It was a 150. Wasn't my favorite. Some people really like it, though. But I didn't even know it was Nadir, though. But Left Column, Enlightened Action, Demolitionist, Moving Target, Tonal Vision, Perpetual Motion, Gutshot Straits. Right Column, Hatchling, Adrenaline Junkie, Kill Clip, Encore, Cascade, Point, Precision Instrument. Now, Point in the Sag which is still a arc precision bow left column no distraction archer's tempo pugilist slick draw elemental capacitor and shot swap right column vorpal weapon eye of the storm swashbuckler precision instrument golden tricorn and dragonfly uh still gonna have the same the same origin traits i really like wild card this is like a legendary version of telesto bolts if you've used it on the ritual hand cannon when you get a kill You'll see little bolts that will fall on the ground for minor enemies. It's like one for, for like, I think elites and majors. It's three. I could be wrong on the elite part. Maybe still one there. But for, like, guardians inside of Crucible, it's three as well. And it's pretty nice. I mean, it, it does, like, 40 damage if somebody directly walks over it. So it can help you get that multi-kill. But these are the weapons right here. This is the, the scout rifle, guys. And then that's the bow. We've got all three Iron Banner weeks lined up for you here as well. So the first week of Iron Banner will be on September the 5th. The second week of Iron Banner is going to be October the 10th. And the final and third week of Iron Banner will be November the 14th, Fortress. Uh, Turtle Power. In August of this year, while scouring the depths of Titan and Season of the Deep, Bungie partnered with five content creators and their awesome communities to raise funds for Brazil's Projeto Tartabinus. Am I saying that right? Which uses scientific research, community education, and sustainable tourism to help sea turtles live and thrive. Our goal was to raise enough money over the course of five days to adopt one turtle through their adopt a turtle program. But our gardens exceeded all expectations and were able to adopt not one, but seven turtles. Introducing K96, Kaido, Flementosa, Asha Squipola, Tidorina, Sagira, and Forbis. Dude, I just killed that name. Uh, dude, look at these turtles! So... Guys, I live here in Florida. There is a period of time, like, you will get fined heavily if you mess with the turtles uh, or the turtle nests around here. But one day, we were outside on the beach and a little turtle, okay, he made his way out of the sand, all right? And he went to just going, man, went straight for the water, little cute fucking guy. And I went out in the water after him. Liam and I both went and we tried to, tried to see where he went. But um, 
We didn't even have a chance to name him. I hope he made it though. He was such a cute guy. And a big turtle hug. Thank you to these content creators. Kavaka, the Vanguard BR, Everson, Mahirio, and Legionnaire. Now Cabbage Patch. And now a quick note from the engineering team. During the early hours of Season of the Witch, many players temporarily experience Cabbage Error Codes. We'd like to take a brief moment to walk you through the issue and what we're doing to prevent it in the future. As part of every release, Destiny 2 code is deployed to a wide variety of servers. Some of these servers are tiny cloud servers, which allows to scale up into the cloud when Destiny 2 traffic gets particularly high. In order to make sure this resource is available if we suddenly need to scale, we deploy our services to these tiny cloud servers with every release. During the deployment of Season of the Witch, a critical step was missed where these servers were not shut down when they were supposed to be. And because they were active, the system attempted to route players to them for gameplay, kicking players out with a cabbage error. As soon as our team recognized the issue, these cloud services were removed from rotation and cabbage errors subsided. The team has taken several measures to prevent this issue from happening in the future. Firstly, our deployment process has been updated to make sure that these particular servers are correctly shut down before we allow players into the game with extra verification. Then, with the Season 23 launch, we will be rolling out several code improvements to our services to prevent this issue regardless of process and improve our ability to recover if any similar issue were to occur. Thanks again for your patience while we fix this issue and we hope you enjoy Season of the Witch. I very much like that Bungie's communicating with us. Okay, let's go. They're actually telling us what, what the problem is and what they're doing to fix it. Part of them just trying to make the overall server quality better. What about stasis? For our stasis lovers out there, we have some things coming up regarding your stasis abilities in Season 23. Not only will the seasonal artifact feature stasis perks, but there will also be some stasis ability changes coming, including Glacial Quake, Frost Pulse, Winter Shroud, Glacier Grenade, and more. We have an artifact and abilities preview with more details as we get closer to the Season 23 launch. Wow. Stasis is finally getting an overhaul or a rework of some sort or maybe in the least some sandbox changes. At this point, it almost feels like it's a forgotten subclass, right? But that's a huge W. It's funny that they're doing that at the launch of season 23, which is going to be in November. And it's the same time when Beyond Light or close to the same time Beyond Light launch, right? It's interesting they're actually stacking that up at the same time. Uh, Prime Gaming update, guys. We've got some new Prime rewards. Now, Raid Content Mode Disables. Okay, all right. We have we have a list here. Tessellation Exotic Fusion Rifle. Warlock Weavelock Aspect. Currently disabled in all rates of PvP activities. Titan Banner of War Aspect. Really? Bone Tracer? Elemental Munitions Mod? <sighs> Malfeasance is safe. All right, I'm going to point out Malfeasance is safe. Loadout safe. Eager's Edge safe. Grapple safe. Telesta, surprisingly safe. Weave. Gone. Tessellation. Gone. You may be wondering, why is Foe Tracer disabled? It's because it's stacking with Surge Mods. We have purposely not reviewed Foe Tracer because we were going to use Foe Tracer. Titan Banner of War aspect being disabled? That fucking sucks. The, 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 whole, the whole traversing that first part of Crota's in Banner of War would have been so good for that. Matter of fact, what I was going to use if, if with Foe Tracer here would have been Banner of War and uh, Strongholds. You literally can't die, guys. Luminous Void Shader. An unintentional change was made to the Luminous Void Shader with update 7.2.0.2. We're currently working to revert this change and return it to its previous appearance. Players should be aware that the shader, as it is displayed currently, will no longer be accurate once this change is reverted in an upcoming update. Now, Galahorn Behavior Updates. Beginning with the launch of the Season of the Witch, Galahorn's behavior was slightly altered. This was due to a recent fix to an issue, causing projectiles to inadvertently damage immune enemies. The side effect of this fix was unintentionally impacted how Galahorn operates. Due to Galahorn's boss DPS dominance, we had previously planned to dial down its damage in a future update. But because this unintentional change resulted in similar changes to those planned, the current behavior of Galahorn will be maintained while we monitor performance. Well... Don't you love how things work out like that? It's like, hey, we didn't mean to nerf it, but let's just leave it as it is, right? You know what I mean? Let's just let it fly. Now, loadouts re-enabled. With the release of update 7.2.0.2, the loadout function has been re-enabled. Players will now be able to access their existing loadouts and create new ones. However, items will be unavailable to be pulled from player vaults for loadouts until a full fix is released in an upcoming update. All right. Sonar Station Vendor. We are currently investigating an issue causing this season the deep Sonar Station Vendor to no longer offer bounties, preventing the completion of the weekly aquatic operation challenge. 
Special delivery kiosks, beginning with the launch of Season the Witch, items such as pre-order rewards and secret status bundles have been moved off of the crypt art to the new special delivery kiosk in the town. Players missing items should double check this vendor for available rewards. New line players will continue to be able to access these rewards from Shao Han in the Cosmic Drum. All right. Known issues. Wow, there's quite a few. Hong Jury and Wendigo are currently unavailable for legacy focusing from Zavala. Okay. The Tessellation Exotic Fusion Rifle incorrectly applies blur to the entire screen when aiming out sights. Wow, nothing about it. You know, doing the thing. Doing the thing. Okay. Uh, the craftable version of Dead Man's Tale does not display owned or available ornaments on inspection. Okay. I don't, I don't see really anything else major here. The perk description for Astrocyte versus Exotic Warlock Helmet is inaccurate. Opaque cards from the Lecter and Divination display that they are rewarding Witches Ingros, but they are not successfully granting rewards. The last Twill and Testament quests can no longer be successfully completed. All right, number of known issues, guys. Outside of that, as a final note here from Sam, and there we have it for this week's Twit. Between the start of the new season, the Destiny 2 Showcase, and Crota on the Horizon, we have a lot to take in and even more to come. We will be cheering you all on, and we cannot wait to see who takes home the belt this time. Thanks for hanging out with us today, Guardians. Now go get ready for Crota and friends. Stay crafty, Sam. That's your job, guys. I think we did pretty good. I think, look at this, man. We had Malfeasance is still a go. Loadouts are still good. Eager's Edge is still good. Grapple's still good. That tells me that you're not going to be able to grapple. You're not going to be able to grapple across. I mean, that makes sense. We wouldn't be able to grapple across the second encounter of Crota's End, but they probably fixed that completely. We nailed it, dude. We, we thought Weave was going to get disabled. Some of you guys said Banner of War. I, I just couldn't believe Banner of War was going to be disabled. I was like, surely not. It's working as intended. I will say this, guys. From now until tomorrow, be prepared for other things to possibly be disabled. Cheese Forever found another loadout bug. Oh, my God. There's a loadout bug to get infinite special ammo. Oh my lord, guys. Y'all are gonna get loadouts disabled tomorrow. Slap that like button like your mama told you right.